Never. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, well, first and foremost, I, uh, I really would like to, to thank the studium for giving me the chance to, to talk about the, the work we, we're doing in our lab on uh, block polymers, self-assembly, and, and also, uh, it's also a chance for me to highlight the uh, collaboration we have with uh, Professor Mark, Mark Hilmeyer, that was a, a studium researcher in 2012-2013, and you can notice here the, uh, the old uh, fashion logo of the studium uh, at that time. So uh, Mark Meyer is professor at the University of Minnesota in uh, Minneapolis, which is a very nice town. I had the chance to go there because actually uh, this collaboration with Mark Meyer was not only during this uh, research fellowship because as you can see here, uh, Everything started in 2019 when he was invited a professor at the University of Orléans for one month. And then I, it was afterwards uh, a continuous exchange be between Mark's stay in, uh, in Orléans and my stay in, uh, in Minneapolis. So I also had the chance to stay for 12 months uh, in, in 2014, 2015. Right, so um, this is the agenda for, for today. So I, I really would like to start by asking, I mean, essential question in order to uh, have most of you with me during all this presentation. So I will try to go very smoothly over what is a polymer, what's the self-assembly of block polymers, and what are thin films. And then I will start to go uh, through the history of this collaboration, starting first with the PSP lay block polymers in order to make para thin films, and then uh, what we've done afterwards during my stay and what we are doing now uh, on, by, by their own. Uh, well, the first question is what a, a polymer, so if you already do know the, the answer, please don't say too loud, but uh, for the others, let's play the game of the polymer, right? So it's a class of materials, uh, like uh, ceramics, like glass, like metal, but it's not those materials. Uh, you can find everywhere in the uh, in the modern life. I mean, uh, in the in this room, you can find them in the uh, in the transportation. You can find them in your in your bed, in your in your bedroom, everywhere, uh, because they have a very great diversity of applications. And uh, the uh, production of polymers is absolutely huge. Uh, it's uh, three three hundred seventy million of tons, which represents the value of uh, two hundred times pyramid of Cheops, which is absolutely colossal, right? And uh, of course, and if I want to, to finish with this, uh, they are petroleum based and their dispersion, the environment starts really to be an issue. So with all these elements, I, I think now you got it. Polymers, actually, where well, we don't call them polymers in the, in the real life, we call them plastics and elastomers, and of course, we can find them everywhere, uh, like ties, like pipe, like bottles, like bags, and uh, this is a very common uh, polymer. This is polyethylene terephthalate, uh, polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene. And uh, if we now look, of course, on a chemical level, you will see that polymers actually are molecules. They're organic molecules, which means that they are a composed of carbon, oxygen, uh, hydrogen. And uh, they are soluble in solvent. And this is something that uh, we will use a lot in our, in our research. Uh, well, if you look at the uh, molecular uh, level, you will see that actually the polymers are constituted of repeating units that are connected a great number of time. This is the repeating unit, for example, for polycarbonate. And you see these po molecules are actually giant macromolecules. They are, uh, this is why we call them macromolecules, by the way. And they are resulting from the polymerization of monomers. So, um, this is uh, the way I will uh, often represent the polymers during my talk because uh, you can see them as uh, uh, very long uh, lines of molecules and this is the way I, I will represent in, in my talk. Right, so now I, I will talk about the, uh, the, the fact that it's interesting to work uh, with polymer and thin films. So uh, when, when we're talking about polymer and thin films, we're really talking about very, very a uh, small amount of polymer, right? So look at that, it's only a few nanometer uh, to something like 200 nanometers, so it's very, very, very thin, and you can put those polymer onto basically everything, on glass, on silicon, mica, quartz, as long as the substrate is really flat. 
And uh, just to show you how we're gonna do this, because the polymer, remember, they are soluble in solvent, you could actually deposit one drop of the substrate, which is uh, under rotation at very high speed, so it, this is a slow motion, right? And during the deposition, you will uh, uniformly uh, cover the substrate, and you will have an, an evaporation of the, of the solvent, and you will end up with a, a, a solid, dry polymer film. Depending on the concentration, depending on the, on the rotation of the substrate, you will end up with different mm, thickness of, of, of the film, right? But uh, so, uh, why this is so important to work with uh, thin films of polymer? The first is because there's really interesting applications. Of course, polymer films, they, are, uh, they can protect the, the surface, they can have specific functionalities like optic, electric, electrical properties or the de uh, electrical devices. Uh, and something that I will show you today is that with those uh, polymer films, you can also use them as a template for surface nanopatterning. In other, in other words, you can use those thin films to make uh, small objects on the surface and use them for interesting application in microelectronics or optic. And this is something I will show you today. Uh, something we are very interested in our lab is also the fact that when you consider the polymer as a thin films, they will have different properties compared to the bulk state, right? So if you compare uh, polystyrene uh, in, in the bulk, right, in, 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 in this room, for example, and, and polystyrene in very thin film, the properties will be modified because of the limited amount of, matter, of, of materials and also because of the effect of the uh, interface. Right? So this is something we are uh, studying a lot in our lab. And also because they are so sensitive to the deposition process that we are able to tune their properties uh, by modifying the uh, deposition process using spin coating. This is spin coating, right? It's, we are coating by spinning the materials. We can also do deep coating uh, and uh, other uh, type of, of uh, surface uh, preparation. So now we're uh, coming to uh, what is a block polymer. So now you understood what it's a polymer. So a block polymer is a, uh, a special type of polymers. It's still a macromolecules, but now you can see here it's composed of two segments having different chemistries. And uh, because they have different chemistries, uh, those two blocks are really incompatible, so they don't like each other, basically, right? So imagine that you're approaching another macromolecules next to the first one. So this is impossible because here you have uh, repulsion between the blue block and the, and the red block, and uh, because uh, this is not ther ther because of the thermodynamics, uh, these polymer will really self assemble self-assemble, it will move by itself, and this is all driven by the thermodynamics to give these, uh, these uh, organization. And this is self-assembly, literally, uh, it assembled by, by itself, okay? And this is only three macromolecules, but if you consider now uh, a, a huge number of macromolecules, right, in the, in the bulk, and you will end up with a three-dimensional order at periodic nanoscopic morphology, which is very important for us. And for example, here in these macromolecules, which is fully symmetric, as you can see here, the, uh, the length of the red block is uh, fully equivalent to the length of the blue block. You will generate in the system a kind of lamellar system. And something which is very important to bear in mind is here the, uh, the, 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 the dimension here. And you, the, as you can see here, this is very, uh, they're very small. This is something like between 10 and 30 nanometers. So we are very in the nano world, nano dimension of, of, of the matter, right? And this is just to show you that uh, it, it really exists in, in the real life. So this is a, a transmission electron microscopy of this system, a lamellar. You can see that there's a, a beautiful alignment of, of, of different colors which represent the, the domains of the block partners, okay? And the beauty of the self-assembly of the block polymer is that depending on the, well, volumic fraction, uh, so this is the uh, relative ratio of the red and, and the blue uh, segment, you will end up with different 
morphologies with different topologies of the system, okay? So uh, here it's the symmetric system, but here if we have uh, uh, a small amount of, of, of the red block, you will end up with spheres. If you increase the amount of red blocks, you will go to cylinders, then gyrate, lamellar, and the other way around, okay? So you can, uh, with block polymers, you can really uh, tune the morphology depending on the, on the parameters of, of the block polymers you're using. So now well, let's go to uh, the final question is why block polymer in thin film? So I will combine block polymer in thin films. And so imagine that uh, I, I'm starting from these materials, uh, cylinder forming block polymers, nano, nano dimension here, spring coating, and the idea would uh, to form this kind of system. A very thin film, 10 to 20, uh, 200 nanometers, with uh, cylinders standing vertically, Id idly, right? And this constitute a very interesting platform for nano patterning. That is actually because it's ordered, right? You see, it's perfectly ordered, it's periodic, and you can uh, transform this now in nano features at the surface of the, sur of the, of the substrate, okay? And just to convince you that this is possible, so this is a, a true system obtained by a microscopic uh, tool that we have in our lab. So this is an atomic force microscopy image. And, and you can see how beautiful is the self-assembly. You have here a continuous matrix of polystyrene. So this is a PSPLA and a, a, a discrete domain of PLA that are forming cylinders that are well ordered at the surface of our thin film, okay? And uh, with this, what can we do? So starting from this thin film, there's uh, plenty of things that you can do. And I will detail today, uh, for example, you can start by selectively re remove one of the polymer in order to make this porous thin film. And with this, what can you do? You can fill the pore with inorganic materials and transform the polymer template into a fully inorganic uh, array of nanoparticles, right? So this is something I will show you today. You can etch through the mask. It's similar to the lithography. You can also uh, perform a selective inclusion and transform this hybrid system into those uh, parity array of, of nanoparticles. And of course, this can be used in, in many uh, applications, in microelectronics, phot photonics, nanofluidics, sensors, biological scaffold. There's a myriad of applications that are open due to this, uh, this approach. Uh, so I will today uh, more specifically uh, describe what we've done with uh, the University of Minnesota in uh, using this, uh, this approach and also this one, okay? And, and the, the, the last question is why, why Mark Hilmeyer is, uh, uh, he, he has been uh, working a lot in, uh, in doing polymers because we need polymers, we are not doing polymers in our lab, we are manipulating the, the macromolecules, but we are not actually doing them. We need chemists for that. And Mark is actually one of the, of the top uh, scientists working in, in, in macromolecular uh, th synthesis. Uh, and, and also he has uh, developing uh, through the last year uh, interesting work on sustainable polymers that are done from uh, renewable sources. Uh, and this is a very good ex uh, example. This is a block polymer, PS, and PLA. Uh, so the, the PS part is really petroleum based and it's not easy to readable, right? But look at this block, this is PLA. This one is bio-based because this can be obtained from lactide that can be made from the fermentation of, uh, of corn or sugar beets. And very importantly, it's degradable in alkaline solution uh, using a, a diluted solution on, of sodium hydroxide. So starting from PSPLA, you can uh, first self-assemble the PSPLA, producing those cylinders, orient the, the cylinders, and then remove selectively the PLA in order to produce this uh, nanoporous, ordered periodic system. And just to show you that this is actually works, this, this is something that was done in the, in the, the group of Mark Hinmeyer. So this is really a, a picture of the internal structure of the PSPLA after the selective extraction of the PLA. And 
you see how this is beautiful. There is a small, uh, small pore here. There are 20, 30 nanometers uh, that can use for membranes, for water filtration, separation of mo molecules, etc. And when we saw this paper, uh, immediately we say, uh, why not? Why can't we use this system in order to make those thin films, okay, exactly in the same method by putting those polymers at the substrate and then selectively remove the PLA in order to produce those uh, thin films with a, a, an internal porous structure, right? So this is exactly what I'm going to show you now. It's how we, we, we can do this. So uh, I, I clearly remember when uh, I first contacted Martin Meyer and I sent him a, an email saying, please could you give us some of your PSPLA because it's a beautiful polymer. So he, he, was, he, he was enthusiastic in, uh, to, to this idea and he, said, he sent us the, the PSPLA. So we did a solution, spin coated on the, on the substrate and we were quite uh, a little bit disappointed because when, when you're doing this, uh, of course you can see that uh, you have a, a kind of uh, phase separation here, but it's not organized. It's, it's like if the, the, the self-assembly is not complete, right? And it's exactly this, because when you're doing this, uh, the, there is a very uh, fast separation of the solvent, and actually the system is freezing to some kind of metastable state. We're far, far from the equilibrium. So what we've done is that we uh, do some post-treatment, and Something that we've worked a lot is something that we call the solvent vapor annealing, it, uh, consisting in exposing the substrate here in, in a closed chamber with vapor of solvent. And in this condition, the solvent will, is penetrating the, the, the film, the film is swelling, and then the macromolecules uh, have some mobility in order to reach the equilibrium state that can, you can see here. Okay, so you can always say that I'm cheating a little bit because it's a little square, but if you, if you do uh, the, 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 some pictures at a bigger scale, this is one micron, so this is something like five micron. You can see here that you have a very good uh, long range order uh, orientation, uh, and this is our very first paper with, with Mark and Meyer that was published in 2010 uh, concerning this, this PSPLA. Just briefly to mention that this is exactly what's occurring during the solvent vapor annealing. This is the initial thickness. And as, as, uh, when, you, when you expose the, the polymer to the vapor um, solvent, uh, then you have a, a strong increase of the thickness. And, and, and in this state here, in the swollen state, it is in this place that the morphological reorganization takes place. Uh, depending on the phase diagram, depending on the interfacial energy, depending on so many things. And, and when you just open the chamber, then you uh, just freeze the system in, in, in the state wh where it is. And depending on those parameters, we uh, fully describe that you can really end up with different final morphologies depending on the vapor pressure, depending on the, uh, the, the, the type of of uh, treatment uh, of the surface, for example. And, and, and the, that was a, a, a very interesting study. And, and this paper is really now highly cited in the, in the community. Um, just to tell you that we are doing, com we are doing com complicated things, like, for example, uh, studying uh, the phenomenon during the solvent annealing, because this is something that uh, we want to know what's going on during the swelling. It's always uh, interesting to, to, uh, to see. And here you can see that uh, we've, din we've done some GISACs uh, that was done in uh, the synchrotron of, of Elytra. And uh, we have been acquiring the, 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 the internal structure uh, during the solvent annealing. And we were able to show that uh, actually during the solvent annealing from zero to 35 minutes, the uh, structure was changing during the, the uh, uh, annealing. And this is not, uh, this is not uh, fast, as you can see. And, and, and this is why that depending on the, uh, on the time of annealing, 
the final morphology can be different. And here we're able to uh, observe a, a structured transition between a, an hexagonal lattice to a, a BCC lattice. Uh, then we came to the porous film, right? So we were able to uh, convert this PSPLA with the pores perpendicularly, perpendicularly oriented uh, in, the, in, in the film towards the same film, but this one, the, this time without any PLA, right? So this can be done with, uh, uh, I was telling with the uh, uh, hydrolysis of the, of the PLA. And, and as you can see here, so this is now uh, uh, the same atomic force microscopy image of the surface. And you can see here that now the, the, the holes are, are more pronounced than in, in, in this uh, before, before treatment. And this is a cross-sectional view of the film. And you can really see here the, the pores standing vertically, perpendicularly to the uh, surface substrate. Uh, and so this is the film here, and this is the, uh, the, the surface. Uh, I won't go into details, but uh, we have been working a lot in trying to uh, characterize the internal porosity of the film. And because of the small amount of matter, uh, it's not easy to characterize the porosity using uh, conventional tools that we are using in our lab. So we, we designed a special experiment that uh, was able to monitor the uh, refractive index of the film as a function of the vapor pressure of, of a solvent. And what we are measuring actually here is the adsorption of the molecules in the film. Uh, and with these techniques, we were able to uh, obtain uh, the, uh, the uh, pore size distribution inside the film themes. That was uh, uh, the first time for this type of polymer thin films and was still uh, with, uh, with Mark Hinmeyer. Something we are very proud is uh, the uh, a special application that we, we work on starting from this nanoporous thin film. Imagine that uh, on the top of, the, of this film, you spread uh, a solution of inorganic precursors, right? So this solution will penetrate in the pores and, and will fill entirely the, the porosity. If you put a little bit more, you will, have, you will infiltrate the porosity, but you will also form a top coat. And if you remove uh, by heating the system above 500 uh, degrees C, which is the degradation temperature of the polymer, you will end up with a fully inorganic replica of what we had before. So this is exactly the same, but this is the, the replication, this, the inorganic replication. And this is pictures of this replication. This is a, a, a cross-sectional view. So you can see here, again, the substrate. You can see here the pillars, so this, the, the pillars. And you can see also here the, the top coat. This is a top view. And so you, you really can see here the substrate, you can see the pillars, and this is the, 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 the coating that is above the pillars. And what can we do with this? Uh, we've tried to use those systems as, a, uh, as microfluidic, uh, uh, for, for microfluidic application, sorry. And, and we show that uh, the water was able to circulate inside those tiny domain. So this is very small. As you can see here, this is 500 nanometers. So this is something like 100 nanometers with pillars of about 20 nanometers. It's very small, but if you, uh, if you design the system very properly, the water can flow inside those system. And you can use this system as a micro fluidic devices, and this, this, was system was, this system was patented and, and was the subject of, of several publications. Um, well, that was for the PSPLA part. Now, uh, I'm, I will tell you something a little bit different, uh, because uh, if you want to convert a thin film into inorganic particles, you don't uh, really need to, uh, well, selectively etch one of the components. You can really use the polymer template uh, for a selective inclusion of uh, the metal oxide precursors in domain. Here, if the red domains are polymers that can uh, develop some selective uh, interaction with uh, precursors, like 
For example, this polymer, here you see uh, it's a PVP. There is a, a specific here interaction with uh, this inorganic precursors and the polymer, and, and there is nothing with the polystyrene. So if you, if you put in interaction these uh, precursors with the film, you will really selective, uh, selectively load the uh, precursors in the red domains and not in the green domains. Uh, and, and then by, again, uh, removing uh, this system, you will end up with uh, an array of nanoparticles. And, uh, well, five, five minutes. minutes. Okay, five <laughs> minutes. Okay. Uh, five minutes. <laughs> okay, so if you look at the particles here, uh, there's the, the particles are something like 20, uh, 50 nanometers. So the answer was, can, can we do smaller? And uh, this is really the subject of, of the work uh, I, I, I carried out when I was in, in Minneapolis with Mark Hinmeyer. So it's all about magnetorization and you know this Moore's law where you have to put more and more transistors so they have to be more and more uh, small, right? So uh, how can this be translated in the block polymer science? So if you want to make smaller particles, you need small domains. And if you need small domains, you, you need to, to take smaller polymers. So this is as simple as that. So is there a limit? Yes, there is a limit, which is the formation of disordered phases. Because if you take very, very small polymers, you cannot form those self-assembly systems, right? So uh, we describe it in this, in this paper that you, you need to uh, uh, select very highly incompatible polymers having uh, the Flory Huggins parameters very important in order to make those small particles, okay? So I will skip this just to show you that we're able to, to make those very, very small particles. Remember, 20, 50 nanometers, and we were capable at the end of my stay in Minneapolis to prepare those very tiny particles, six nanometers in size, very small particles. Uh, just to finish, uh, I, would, I would say that uh, we are now working in, in, uh, in making a more exotic structure with block polymers. Uh, I show you that block polymers can, can self-assemble in, in sphere cylinders, lamellar, uh, in, in a simple morphology, but we are now working in producing uh, even more complex morphology. Look, for example, what we succeed to do with these uh, polystyrene, polyisoprene, polyloctide, uh, this is uh, very uh, intriguing, right? And, and actually, uh, this, this morphology is cylinders with spheres on the cylinders with uh, a continuous matrix of polystyrene which uh, is surrounding those cylinders. Another example is these uh, squared morphology with, in, in soft matter, I don't know if you realize, but in soft matter, this is something that normally cannot exist. So we were able to make square domains just by mixing two uh, uh, block polymers uh, in, this, uh, in this system. And this is a collaboration that we have now uh, with our colleagues in Nagoya. And uh, just, to just to show you that we're working also on phase transition, phase transition sorry, induced by, by the confinement in thin films. So we were able to show that here we were able to, to to start from a gyrate and, and go to cylinders. And uh, just to show you the perspective of this work, we're now uh, still working in, in, uh, with the Nagoya colleagues in order to work on even smaller domains in order to really reach what we call some uh, extreme conditions of confinement. So here it's not perfect because as you can see here, this is not perfectly organized, but uh, that, was, that was already a, a very nice paper in polymer chemistry that make the cover, but uh, really we're still working in, in this direction. Uh, right, so almost, <laughs> good. good. Uh, I really would like to thank the studium because, uh, uh, well, I, I really think that without uh, the, uh, the collaboration with Mark, Mark Hinmeyer, and, and really he, is, he stay in our lab for one year, uh, that was really a boost for our, for our research. And I really think that 
uh, without this, this long stay in Orléans, uh, our research would not be uh, at the same level, for sure. And of course, I, I really thank all the collaborators in, in Orléans, uh, at the University of Minnesota, of course, and, and now something that is growing, it's uh, our collaboration with our colleagues in, in Nagoya in Japan. And uh, well, to finish, I really would like to uh, give the, the, the floor to uh, Mark Kinmeyer, right? So, Mark, the floor is yours. Thank you, Christophe, for giving me this opportunity to reflect on my time at the University of Orléans and the CNRS as a Lestudium Fellow. Uh, first and foremost, uh, my memories of my time in Orléans are overwhelmingly positive. I was so pleased with how the Lestudium staff welcomed me and my family and helped with every stage of our transition uh, to France. Some parts were easy and uh, some parts I was very happy of real French folks uh, helped me uh, through the process and, and all the paperwork uh, in French. Um, the collaborative and cooperative nature of the research uh, efforts that I participated in during my time in the lab uh, were wonderful and I very much felt welcome in the laboratory environment. I was happy to learn some new techniques and even make some good progress on a couple research projects. Even led by Christoph, I was also very pleased to be part of a perspective uh, that was published in Macromolecules, uh, that's the leading journal in polymer science, and has been a very highly uh, cited contribution. Uh, finally, I appreciated the diversity of science and scientists that participated in the Lestudium program. I have uh, wonderful memories about the interesting science that I learned, learned about and was way outside my area of expertise. It was uh, fascinating and, and invigorating, and for that I'm, I'm thankful. Uh, happy 25th birthday, and all the best for the next 25 years, and uh, maybe I can come back sometime. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you for your attention. Right.